You know, one of the aspects of the uh, of the play that I was fascinated by is that there was this feeling at this time that there was a means to exist outside of a system. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, all of us feel like there is no means to exist outside of the system now. No matter what you do, you have to be within the system itself. So there's no revolutionary idea anymore of actually destroying the system or taking it down because it's just too big and swallows everything no matter how revolutionary or disruptive that piece may be. What was it like for you as young people playing these parts and playing these people who really felt like they could destroy and change the system? I mean, I think... When we were doing research about the time, right, I think something that stuck out to us and I know um, was really interesting to Stephen, our playwright, was that that time period, the late 60s before it turned into the 70s, was maybe the last time that people truly felt like they could dismantle the system and build up a completely new system. Um, after that, uh, we haven't really seen that sort of sentiment in a movement since. but. You know, at the same time, I think we're um, in a time period now where there's a lot of talk, whether it's there's truthful talk about it and there's also political rhetoric about it of, um, you know, we all know the phrase draining the swamp by now, um, of this thought of uh, taking down the system as it currently is and building it back up into something else. And um, so much of what interests me about this play and then about our time now is how that gets warped and is used as something different. Um, and I think what happens in the play is because these people do completely take themselves out of their surroundings and their community and uh, the system. And they're sort of just um, ricocheting these ideas off of each other of what they believe is right. And so it gets warped into this kind of thing that actually isn't grounded in reality anymore. And that's what Hal does when he comes into this group and sort of is confronted with it as he's this voice of reality and reason. And it, it, it's interesting to see how the people that are within the political collective end up living in this kind of bubble because they've insulated themselves with their ideas. Well, they themselves end up warping those ideas as well. Mike, I think your character himself, whether it's intentional or not, in order to maintain some kind of control, which is clearly a comment on patriarchy at that time and now, ends up kind of warping the ideas so that he can have a somewhat con somewhat of a control on the women that he's living with. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if it's necessarily to have control over the individuals, but maybe control, uh, it's more of an unconscious kind of level of just um, having control over my situation in this moment and being, you know, um, unrealistically hopeful with what I'm actually able to accomplish. Um, and, I, and I think the only way to maybe get by in a certain situation by that is to just keep feeding you, yourself the things that you need to hear in order to keep going. And I think that we do that um, when whatever kind of situation we are, how desperate it is. 